Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the synthesis of carboxylic acids. Uh, by the time most people get to carboxylic acids in an undergraduate organic chemistry course, they've probably encountered them as the products of a number of reactions. And I'm going to quickly summarize those kinds of reactions. Um, and I, I'll talk about mechanisms where it's important. <clears throat> uh oh. One place where you encounter uh, the carboxylic acid is through oxidative cleavage of alkynes with uh, ozone. Wrong kind of arrow. Uh, I have a video on this reaction in my, my series of videos on alkynes uh, that goes into more detail about how this reaction works and how it's different from uh, the oxidative cleavage of alkenes. But uh, basically, if the, the alkyne is symmetric, you get two of the same carboxylic acid. If it's not symmetric, you get different carboxylic acids, and uh, et cetera. If it's terminal, the, the terminal end gets chewed off to carbon dioxide. So here's one way to make uh, uh, carboxylic acids. Another way is through, uh, you know, you know, there's other oxidation reactions. So, for example, primary alcohols can be oxidized by chromic acid. And in my videos on the oxidations of uh, alcohols, I've described this process in some detail, uh, including the types of oxidizing agents that can be used, as there are more than just chromic acid. Um, generally, and anything that, that chromic acid does, basic potassium permanganate can do after, after you neutralize it. So, potassium permanganate, sodium hydroxide. Uh, this reaction would actually produce the carboxylate anion, which after your neutralization with acid, you'd have the carboxylic acid. Here. So, <clears throat> you know, oxidation works. Uh, there are other functional groups that can be oxidized. For example, alkyl side chains on benzene can be oxidized. Uh, again, both of these methods work. Both chromic acid and uh, basic potassium permanganate will oxidize alkyl benzenes to benzoic acid, and that oxidation chews off some carbons uh, if they are there. Um, there's a pretty cool reaction out there that is a reaction of Grignard reagents. Uh, I don't have it necessary. I didn't. I did not cover this reaction in in my Grignard reagents uh, video series, but I'll probably, or at least as of the making this video, I haven't covered it. It's probably going to end up there in some detail. But uh, I'm just gonna. It's it's <coughs> it's a quickie, so I'll share the. Uh, the, the overview overview and the mechanism. So generic Grignard reagent, I just want to get out here the uh, sequence of events. One, uh, we react it with carbon dioxide and then we, we neutralize that and then, you know sometimes I will write water, actually I tend to prefer to write, write aqueous acid to work up a Grignard reaction but in this case it is required um, because we are producing something that is acidic we need to make sure we have acid to protonate it. Uh, from a mechanism standpoint, here's our, our Grignard reagent. Uh, we know Grignard reagents react with carbonyl electrophiles, and honestly, uh, carbon dioxide is like a molecule that has two carbonyl groups uh, coming off the same carbon. So we can, there we go. This look kind of like I want it to. Here, fix that area, uh, and so honestly, you this this uh, nucleophilic addition occurs in very much the same sort of way that you would expect. Uh, one of the carbon oxygen double bonds breaks; the other one stays together. Now we have a carboxylate anion. The carboxylate anion is not reactive further uh, under these conditions, and so when you protonate it using aqueous acid. 
you generate the carboxylic acid. That's cool. Um, and then generally, the, 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 the last kind of reaction that synthesizes carboxylic acid are the hydrolysis of carboxylic acid derivatives. Uh, those include esters, amides, acid halides, and hydrides, and nitriles. Um, and all of these reactions are going to be covered in more detail in the uh, subsequent videos on those functional groups and the types of reagents and things that are needed. But the nitriles are worth um, particular note because nitriles can be synthesized from, you know, from, you know, from a variety of other compounds, you know, because the cyanide anion the nucleophile. So most of the other carboxylic acid derivatives are synthesized from carboxylic acid. So talking about synthesizing a carboxylic acid from an ester when the ester was made from the carboxylic acid originally is a little bit, you know, circular and maybe counterproductive. But because nitriles can be generated from other electrophiles, by reacting those electrophiles with uh, cyanide nucleophiles. Um, and so here is just one example using, let's say, sodium cyanide in uh, DMSO. So this is an SN2 kind of reaction. And um, my R group, I want to Oh, I want to get to my select tool because I want to show the carbon label here because I like to do that. Uh, and then the nitriles are generally hydrolyzed uh, under thorough aqueous uh, acidic hydrolysis, and often this requires heat. Um, so you know you need a molecule that can withstand those kinds of conditions but you can generate the carboxylic acid from the nitrile or you started from a halide or some other leaving group. And um, the SN2 is not the only reaction that can get a hydro or a cyanide or nucleophile. Uh, cyanide reacts without a heights and ketones to make cyanohydrins. And that video is, or that reaction is covered under uh, the videos on, or my video series on, on that topic. Uh, and then copper cyanide reacts with arine diazonium salts to make uh, benzonitriles. Uh, and so there's another source there of, of nitriles that can be hydrolyzed to carboxylic acids and converted into other functional groups. So here's the, uh, here's the cyanohydrin thing. And then um, just as a, one last reminder of how you can go about making nitriles. Uh, react aniline with sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid, and this converts aniline into uh, benzene diazonium chloride, so this di and then this diazonium salt can react with copper cyanide to make uh, benzonitrile. Uh, <clears throat> not the only way to make benzonitrile, but it is a way to make benzonitrile, and I'm going to actually put this down here so that it is not hiding behind my head. Right. So nitriles are, can be generated in a lot of ways, which makes them a useful precursor to carboxylic acids. Right. Uh, I'm going to talk about the mechanism of the hydrolysis of nitriles in the videos on nitriles, and I, and I do note that esters and other carboxylic acid derivatives can also be hydrolyzed to carboxylic acids. So this concludes my video on the synthesis of carboxylic acids. Thank you for watching.